The text for the uh, message this morning, this All Saints Day, is the, uh, the first reading of Revelation 7. I would like to remind you of uh, part of verse 14. It says, these are the ones coming out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. This is our text. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I think uh, if you consider it carefully, you would realize that uh, there have been days for all of you, for me as well, when we are uh, acting kind of unlovable. I mean, uh, you, you married folks especially are aware of that sort of thing because we do that to each other pretty regularly to the people we love the most. So I know you understand and we've all caused lots of trouble for lots of people in our lifetime. That's what sin does. And uh, sometimes we do it because we're angry. And sometimes we do it for spite. And sometimes we're just stubborn or difficult. But you know what I mean. Oddly enough, even when we're doing that, some people still love you anyway. Again, I come back to you married folks because that's the, fact, the facts right there too. Uh, no matter how big of a dope you've been, your spouse still loves you. That's what happens. It's actually a bit miraculous. Um, it's always a little speculative, I guess, uh, when experts tell you why this uh, book of Revelation to John was even written down. Uh, those of you that have been enduring the, the study of it with me uh, know what I mean. It's a very difficult book to follow. Uh, but, you know, life is scary and difficult in this world, and, and it reflects that to some extent. Revelation echoes that suffering and tribulation powerfully. It, which should tell you something, uh, as it told the people that John was writing to, that God knows that it's difficult to live in this world and that we cause a lot of trouble for ourselves and for others. And, and life has its own difficulties without any help. But he knows, and he revealed it to John so that we could see that he knows. This part shows you why, to some extent, it was there for those in John's life too. If you remember, this was a long time ago that he wrote these things down and the people that were with him needed to hear it too. The, the message shows God's holy ones, this part of it does, uh, saints, if you will, standing there in heaven, in his love, in, in, in their own joy and in their worship there in heaven. They were there, or at least it shows them there Though I think this is probably showing something that hasn't happened fully yet. And, and this is true, even though they would suffer, uh, not only in the, the difficulties of the world, but also because of the sinfulness of human beings, just like you and me. It's hard for any of us to hear that we're holy, because... Well, we know ourselves, and it's, it feels a little funny to be told that we're holy. We've confessed sinfulness many times, and uh, not least of all today. It's our faith that this is so. It's our Bible that tells us that from our God. And, so, you know, if sinfulness is one of the things that you're supposed to believe about yourself, where's the, where's the saint in that? And so we all wonder sometimes about it. And if we're sinners and can't stop it, no matter what we think or no matter what we do, if that's so, looking over our various lives, one thing we have to say we all have in common is that we sin. Now, if that's so true, as the Bible has taught us, what possible right could any of us have to a place in such a paradise that you see in this writing in this book of Revelation. Uh, and, and yet, this picture of heaven shows people there, people. 
And, and as we know, there are no people that are not sinners, and yet they're there because they're saints. In the end, it doesn't matter very much what you think you are before God. It might seem important what you think of yourself there, but really it's only important that God loves you and also what he does to keep you, what he does to make sure you get to be with him. Those are important. That tells you the truth of it. Because if the God that loves you thinks you are holy, he's a whole bunch more expert about that than any of us. I think you have to accept that that's true. This bit of God's revelation here in Revelation 7 uh, is to the Apostle John, when he's very old, has lived in God's grace for a good long time, and this sees the people of God present in heaven. Every last one of them had been sinners, all of them. Here they are entering heaven to welcome and worship the very one that brought them their salvation. <clears throat> So there must be something that God does because you can't and I can't and nobody else can. And we're all sinners to the bone. So whatever happened to get them there has to be God. There's not really very much here in the way of qualifications. <clears throat> like you, just like you, they came through tribulation, which is really just another word for suffering in the world. And their robes are white. That's the other thing that marks them, marking them all as holy, made righteous before God. And it, and it says how that happened. It happened in the blood of the Lamb. Well, and you know, we sing about the lamb who takes away the sin of the world. That's Jesus. This view might seem very far from you, an impossible reach, but it's not at all. This is actually about you. It took something here to look to the future. God reveals it to you. But your robes that wait in heaven are yours now. You have them in promise. You have already been made righteous. You have already been forgiven. You have all been washed clean in the blood of the lamb, even as you partake of it today on this very altar. All of that has already happened to you. You know Jesus. He's the actual son of the living God incarnate in this world for you. His holy ones. He shed his blood, completely willing to die for you, which is so miraculous and amazing. After he suffered everything, even the burdens of your sin as he took them on himself at the will of the Father who loves you. The whole counsel of God in the Bible is, from beginning to end, God's plan to save you in eternity and to bring you home to the place he has prepared for you in his own house. This is so, this moment in Revelation shows you that it is so. You know, it's interesting, this same John in his gospel once said that Christ tinted with us. And it is, that's not the word that usually is translated there, is that he lived among us, that he settled here. But it says tented because it's a temporary thing. He was only here temporarily like you are. Uh, but he lived with us as a human being. But that's only part of the story. This bit of poetry here in Revelation says even more. Apparently, by what it says, your shepherd, the one who cares for you, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, including your own, your Savior will 
not only be living with you, but it says that he will be your tent. He will be your shelter. He will be the place where you live. He will be the one that protects you from the elements. There will be no more suffering. There will be no more tears. All of your well-being will be in Christ, which is going to be your house forever. This is what these things say. God wants you to see them so that you know their soul, even when you live through tribulation, even though you suffer many things, even though you see so much of your own sinfulness, he wants you to see more than that, your forgiveness, your holiness before God, you being lifted up with a promised place in heaven. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.